Hey guys, welcome to Quinn's Tree Farm. Coming to you right through the power of YouTube, straight from Cornville, Maine. Today, I thought I had a couple of minutes to give you a tour of the new farm and do some uh, channel updates, so to speak, and go back and look over some old projects and see where things are at with those. Maybe talk about what we're gonna do in the future and, and show you some things. So uh, let's take a walk around the field. Of course, the first thing you can see, I got me a new sign. I built that with a CNC router. Wanted to do a video on that, but just kept getting frustrated with the way it was coming out. And finally I said, I gotta get this up. I don't have time for that. And again, I apologize because life really has taken over and uh, it's hard to get a video out. And hopefully once we get this up to up to snuff, uh, it's gonna be a multi-year project. There's a lot of things going on here, uh, but I'll get back to it. So let's go take a look at the fields. I wanna show you some of our trees. Let's get to it. We are located at 290 West Ridge Road in Cornville, Maine. As you know, uh, that is the farm headquarters. Uh, and we have eight acres of field here. When we first started, uh, this place was a lot messier than it is now. Uh, the gentleman that, that owned it before us, uh, unfortunately he actually passed away this summer, uh, but he had gotten to a point where he couldn't care for the trees and, and the property and things just kind of got ahead of him and we've been spending a lot of time cleaning it up. So the property initially came with uh, the garage, the trailer, and all of the equipment. The only thing that didn't come with it was uh, he had a 45 horsepower coyote tractor that he, uh, they ended up selling with a bush hog separately. And they got rid of that before I could get my hands on it. But that's okay, because we have the John Deere, and uh, maybe in the future we'll get a bigger tractor. Wouldn't that be fun, have a 4066 with a cab, plow some snow, haul some trees, will be great. These are gonna be our tree stalls. I'm going to probably use these as they sit this year. I've gotten the bush hog in there, got them all cleaned out. Uh, and then next year, uh, get the cedar post reset and get nicer, cleaner bays up. One of the future projects down the road will be this Jackdo Mist blower sprayer. Typically this is used uh, for insecticides and herbicides. I am going to use it hopefully for fertilizer, uh, mist spraying, things like that. And or if that doesn't come to fruition, I'm gonna sell it. But I had a tree grower friend of mine tell me, he gave me two things of advice. He says, uh, don't ever sell that sprayer. But if you are gonna sell it, you better sell it to me. So I think that's code for, for that's a good piece of equipment that we're gonna need to keep around the farm. So as you can see in this field, we had a lot of cull trees uh, and I'm bringing them out to the end of the rows. And then I'm probably, I keep saying I'm gonna have a big burn pile, but eventually I have a burn pile, a burn pile. This band over here uh, appears to be Fraser firs on this side of the on, of this row and you can see i got a couple of more growing seasons and then we're going to be in really good shape and then on this side that sun's shining down this is all korean fur now korean furs are korean furs are an absolutely beautiful tree and uh, i like them i didn't know anything about them until i got the field uh, but i like them but they have problems. This is this is one of my shining star. I say shining star, but one of my better Koreans. They have really thick needles. See how thick those needles are? And then a really silvery, just beautiful silvery underside. They have a really citrusy smell, almost like a con color. But we have a lot of problems with Koreans. The biggest thing, oh look, here's one. I don't even have to walk that far. They get wonky top. What I think about Korean furs is, uh, for all of you who grew up on Sesame Street, uh, do you remember the aliens that go yum, 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 mm, 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 yum, 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 
Well, that's what they look like. Look at those alien tops up here. So this is a problem, right? We don't need that. So I'm going to have to come back in here before next season. And I want to get that leader nice and straight. Try to find one that's going to be solid. The other problem is we have cones. These things cone like nobody's business. And they're sticky. But they smell good. So those are... Those are some of the downsides to the Korean fur, but they do. They, they have a beautiful look to them. They have a beautiful smell. All right, let's head deeper into the woods here. I'm going to get rid of my sweatshirt. So this bank over here that we're going to, this is uh, probably one of the banks that was in the worst shape. And the thing about Christmas trees is once you let them go, they can be really hard to get back. So you spend your time on the ones that you can keep going so this block back here was uh in pretty rough shape and you saw the videos with the aggressive shearing we were actually shearing into new growth i was really nervous about how that was gonna uh come out because you're losing all that growth you're gonna use a lose a year of growth for the most part i think they came out okay and the upside is is we're gonna get a lot of trees back so this is this is the field that we did the really aggressive sherry good and you could tell i mean you could you could see those trees down there don't look much like christmas trees and then you can see that i've been in here and i've tagged a little bit and, and some of the trees that we're going to get out it really was one of those fields that was once going to be a great stand and it just got away from them so this is kind of the projects that we're fighting on to get this back into fruition uh, get this back ready to go and I'm hoping that once we do I'll be able to focus on bigger and better projects save the trees that we can save and then we'll strip the trees that we can't now my initial goal was to keep the trees on the stick until it was time to go for wreath tips but we're gonna put 2,000 Christmas trees in these fields and uh, I need to have space to do it he did not the old farmer did not use a 7x5 grid like I used he's more like a 6x5 or a 6x stick them in as tight as they can be and that can be problematic because they run into each other now you can see we did work these trees those have all been sheared uh, this year and I think a lot of these are gonna come out. I got to get my red tags on them to to ship them out to places For this holiday season But other than that these uh, the back 40 here is, is gonna get cleared out so I can get another 2,000 trees in So as I was saying we have eight acres of trees and buildings here I also acquired the tree rights to two other fields when I took over this property. They're the same trees that uh, the previous owner was taking care of. And that adds another 12 acres of trees to. And then I have the three acres of field that I have on my original plan. So the goal is to have hopefully up to 40 or 50,000 trees. At that point, I'll obviously have to have help, a lot more work, but we're well on our way. Right now, I have about 5,000 trees that are saleable, uh, or, or on their way to be saleable, I guess is a better term. And uh, I, I, I am planning on planting 5,000 next year, and then 5,000 the year after that. And then at that point, we'll reevaluate and see where we're at. This is the tree that Dad sheared last year. I mean, the, the growth on it is fantastic. So, I think I will do some radical shearing here. And you're not even going to be able to tell that there was a problem with it. Give it another couple of years and it should be a really good tree. So 
So one of the things that dad did on this tree was there's a really long leader with really good growth and then there was a shorter one and he cut that long one out. I'm gonna show you where that was and you tell me that if in a couple of years you're even gonna know that it was there. So this was the big cut that he made last year and you can tell that that's gonna heal right up and you would never know that that was a tree that was in trouble. Let's go look at a couple of other things that uh, kind of got away from me. This spring we got those 500 3O's from Finest Kind up in Dover Foxcroft and we we're going to do a seed garden. And, and we did. Uh, I got those planted about a week after we planted the uh, big ones there. <laughs> That was before we made an offer on the other tree farm. So as soon as we closed on that, the seed uh, got and kind of went by the wayside. So I don't know if you can see any trees in there at all. Get a little, get a little weedy in there. I had a much higher mortality rate this year than I did last year on my seedlings, and I attribute that to two things: one, buying the big field and I didn't have time to come in and irrigate like I did last year uh, with the ass over tree kettle field that we're going to go over to now and two I I got into the, the weeds so to speak getting busy and I didn't do a very good job of getting those seedlings out in a timely manner so it took me about two weeks to get all thousand seedlings out and I'm afraid in that time that I had some dry uh, roots that uh, I didn't keep moist so those are the two things that I attribute to my poor growth there so we'll end up cutting out the ones that did not survive and then replanting next year here's the big seed garden as you can see, we sprayed this one already uh, with the Roundup Simazine mix. And you can see that the uh, growth is starting to die off, but the trees are still standing up and they're gonna be okay. So these will get another year's growth. I don't know how I feel about doing this uh, next year. I think it was a fun experiment, but I think I'm gonna be too busy and we'll just stick with getting three twos from the guys who know what they're doing and leave it be I don't know how many of you have seen my very first video but it's the one where we grabbed the wildlings from the woods and I put them over the quarter and uh, I said we'll see how they grow and uh, we were gonna plant them in the little seed bed and and uh, go from there and the same thing they're still alive and I think they'll be okay once we get them transplanted into the field but uh, didn't quite go as as well as I had thought or had hoped uh, But that's all right. It was a lot of fun. It was a great experiment It really got me excited about Christmas trees and doing the YouTube videos. So that's always And the same thing it just got away from me Got some chickens from the neighbors. Just chomping on uh, whatever it is that they chomp on. Look at these things. So I'm really happy with these. Uh, the bud sets for next year are just, they're gonna be great. Uh, really nice, really happy with what we have going on there. Uh, just a lot of nice tree growth this year. Uh, next year I expect it to be all the way up to maybe a foot of growth in some of these trees. It's kind of the long and short of it. Harvest season's gonna be coming up. Gonna harvest a few Christmas trees this year for some wholesale customers and then my retail customers and then we'll go from there and then next year will be even bigger so 
I hope you enjoyed the tour of the farm. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. And uh, this fall weather makes me feel pretty happy. And you know, I'd really rather feel bad in Maine than feel good anywhere else. So there I go, my friends. I'll uh, see you soon. Ah! Uh -huh.